Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. It's Friday, May 21st, 2010, and here's what's going on in the world of cars. In a very important development for General Motors, Opel is close to a deal with its unions in Germany and Belgium to reduce its workforce and cut labor costs. The AFP reports that Opel's unions have agreed to pay cuts, closing an assembly plant in Antwerp and shedding 8,300 jobs. However, GM's full restructuring plans for Opel require 1.8 billion euros in government money, mainly from Germany, and getting that money is still uncertain with European governments having to pour billions of euros into the Greek economy. The Obama administration is pushing for fuel economy standards on medium and heavy duty trucks. The Detroit News reports that the administration wants new fuel regulations in place by 2014. It also is working on a CO2 standard for later in this decade, all with the idea of preempting the state of California from enacting its own separate rules so that automakers only have to deal with one set of regulations. Earlier in the week, we reported that the FBI was investigating several suspicious packages sent to different Toyota plants in the U.S., but it turns out they were harmless. According to the Charleston Gazette, the packages were sent by a Nigerian man claiming to be an engineer, and they contained test models for a turn signal that he invented. The packages caused a scare because they contained wires and electronics, did not include a return address, and came with a postmark from outside of the country. The FBI does not plan to contact the man or charge him with anything. On Tuesday, we reported on the cost of the Nissan LEAF and how it will be priced much higher in Europe than in the U.S. Well, Nissan contacted Autoline Daily and gave us this explanation. Europe's import duties are higher and shipping and handling costs are not included in the U.S. price. Also, the European price includes a value-added tax and the U.S. price quote is before taxes. That does explain why the price would be higher in Europe. But if you also remember, we reported that the price in Japan will be much higher than in the U.S., but Nissan did not explain that difference. Maybe it can be explained away with taxes, but we'll just have to wait for that explanation. Toyota and Tesla are teaming up to build electric cars, sort of. The Japanese automaker is investing $50 million in the Silicon Valley startup, which will use the recently closed Numi plant in California to assemble its new Model S. Seems to me, though, this is all about public relations. The Numi plant is a gigantic facility, far in excess of what Tesla needs. But this deal makes it look like Toyota is helping to bring jobs back to Numi, even though Toyota is not at all involved in building cars at the plant. Supplier company Lear just announced that it's developed a new type of vehicle seat, one that it claims is up to 25 pounds lighter. That's a huge amount of mass to cut out of a seat. Not surprisingly, the weight savings start right at the chair's foundation. Lear's new eco frames are up to 30% lighter than conventional seat structures. Besides saving weight, Lear is also pushing innovative and environmentally friendly technologies. Things like soybean oil-based foam padding and its new eco fabric that's made from 100% recycled soda pop bottles. Look for the new Evolution seat, as it's called, to debut in Asia sometime next year. Looks like car sales are getting better and better in the American market, but here's one automotive executive who hopes the market does not come quickly roaring back. Now, why would he say that? We'll have his answer in just a matter of seconds. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. Tom Stallkamp was the former president of Chrysler, on the board of Daimler Chrysler, and is now with the private equity firm Ripplewood Holdings, which still keeps him heavily involved in the automotive industry. I wanted to know what he thinks about the sales recovery going on in the American market, and let's go to that clip right now. Volumes have been disastrously low. Is 
the supplier industry going to be able to ramp up? Like this, just this week, A.T. Carney came out and said, hey, we're going to see uh, record sales by 2015. I hope not. I hope we don't see record sales because I don't think the industry can keep up. I, I think the problem is the big guys have secured through either bankruptcy or through their refinancing, they've secured their credit lines. But the industry still relies on hundreds and thousands of middle-sized, small mom pa shops who don't have the credit yet and aren't going to be able to expand as fast as the industry picks up. And so I think that's the big question. The banks, which you know, small and middle-sized companies get their money from banks. They don't get it from the street or from uh, private investors. They get it from uh, commercial lending. And that hasn't really picked up yet. You can hear that entire interview with Tom Stallkamp, my guest on AutoLine Detroit this week at our website, AutoLineDetroit.tv. Also joining me on that show are Edward Lapham from Automotive News and Neil Baudet from The Wall Street Journal. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching, have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.